Again, uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, I'm John Rowe, CEO of PivPoint Labs. We also have uh, Shane, he's the uh, heads up our sales department, and Ryan, who is a developer support engineer that's going to be assisting with demos. So thanks again for joining. We're also live streaming on, on LinkedIn, and we're gonna dive in and just give you a few PowerPoint slides, show us what we're doing today, have a few poll questions, and then just gonna dive into the demos. Uh, we know people's time is limited and we're really striving to keep this uh, at about 30 minutes. So what we're gonna do uh, is cover our sneak peek. So we've been pushing out a lot of information and invited you here to see our new SaaS, our web-based application. We've been working really hard on it. And it is, uh, it's an application that allows you to do cross-platform, cross-device collections running purely from the cloud. And also gonna be talking about another product we have called CrossCopy Portable, which has been out for about a year now, runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And we're going to dive into those today. We uh, encourage you guys to ask questions and uh, at any point uh, as needed. Next slide. So the reason that we created the cross copy products are because as you know, uh, keeping a single interface to go across all devices, uh, all operating systems can be a challenge. And as many people have realized in recent years, Fewer and fewer people are sending out bodies into the field to do collections or wanting to send out hard drives. And that's where these products come into play is that ability to simplify remote collections. CrossCap Enterprise can uh, collect from, again, cross device. It can go from Mac, Windows, Linux. You can do it cross browser. It, it, it's fine with doing Edge or Chrome. And you can also run the application both administratively and on the custodian side from Android and iOS. So uh, mobile platforms, uh, whether it be tablets or mobile phones, aren't a problem. It collects from, currently collects from Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, and local device and network files. So those are the sources. And then what CrossCopy Enterprise does is act as a medium to make sure that the uh, collections from those different sources are hash verified, defensible, and then it goes up to the clients, either AWS buckets or Azure containers. So we're back end agnostic, if you wanna say, and in the demos that we've done with people, they find this very, uh, they really like this because you know they, they've already got storage accounts set up within AWS and Azure, and they want to be able to go to their accounts versus forcing them to come to our accounts and then charging extra storage fees and things like that. Next slide. Uh, some of the differentiators in CrossCopy Enterprise, and, and these are pretty big based on, the, again, the demos that we've done and we've talked to people, is that it's hash verifying different source types, right, or hash types. And one of the things that we're finding is a blind spot, and I've written several articles on this, uh, the blind spot with doing cloud collections is that it's very difficult to do a hash verification. Unlike a local copy where you can just say, I wanna, let's say an MD5 on the file and then get another MD5 when it gets copied, we're forced and you should be forced as a cloud uh, collection product to ask what the hash value is from the source provider, capture that, and then duplicate that same hash type as the data is getting copied to the targets. And we found that people are doing a lot of collections out there and they're not doing this hash type match and verification and can't really create a defensible chain of custody. They're just copying the files and as long as it, it basically doesn't blow up on the other end, they think everything's fine. So this is one of the key features within CCE is in, you know, from what we've seen, possibly the only or one of the only uh, hash or sorry, cloud collection tools that's uh, considering this when it does the copies. Again, we're up, upload is agnostic. We can go to the different sources. Cross copy portable. Uh, one of the some of the differentiators are that with the newer Apple chipsets, the M1, M2, Apple Silicon, it's just fine. Cross copy runs across Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, it can run from an external hard drive. You don't need to have it installed on the computer. And the newer Macs as well as the older Mac, it'll work on the newer and the older Macs. 
uh, minimal training. Most of the people that we show cross copy to can pick it up in a matter of minutes. And like our other products, like Safe Copy and Harvester, you can easily resume jobs that have been canceled or failed. You can save the job settings and reuse them, and then you can auto load them essentially. So when you're doing a self collection kit, you know it. Uh, you can exit that. When you're doing a self collection kit, it uh, makes it really easy just to use the same essentially interface and application and ship it out on drives. And whether you're you know running it from a DMG for a Mac or uh, from a DXE from a Windows side. They're going to know the they're, they're going to know the interface and they're going to be able to run it just the same. So thanks for dealing with a few PowerPoint slides. Uh, Shane's going to dive in here. We're going to kind of coordinate and simulate how you would use Cross Copy Enterprise to send out custodian requests, collect files from them, and uh, so forth. Great, thanks, John. <clears throat> Excuse me. Appreciate everybody uh, showing up today. Uh, we're pretty excited about this product. Um, I'm not sure if John mentioned it or not, but we do have a handout section um, in the uh, the go to webinar interface on the right hand side there. John wrote some pretty good articles about the cloud, um, the cloud collections and all that good stuff. He's not just a pretty face. He's got a pretty good brain in there. Um, so this is cross copy enterprise. What you're looking at now is you're looking at the ad administrative screen. Um, so we've got an overview and this is the overview. Uh, nice, clean interface. You can see we can look at, look at the total number of projects. Uh, we can see the total number of requests. A request is basically a request for information, right? A request for docu documents or data. We also have the total amount of files that were uploaded. And then down here, just a couple other little uh, little screens letting us know our success rate, uh, completion rate, files that were uploaded over time, um, just some additional information about all that good stuff. From here, we can go into our projects. Here's all of our projects that we've that I've ran. Um, just doing some testing. I can see here. I can also go to a list view, so we can see the list view as well. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and show you uh, how to set up once you get it. Once you get your own instance of this, that's something that you got to remember. We're not in charge of this. At the, at the end of the day, uh, you guys will be getting your own instance of this, and you guys should be in charge of of where all this sits and goes. Um, so. So we, what, first thing you need to do is decide if you want to use Azure or Azure, however you want to say it, and then or Amazon. So like John said, we, we don't care where that data goes. That we're, it's not coming to our um, to our servers or anything like that. We're not into data hostage or anything like that. We just want to make sure that the data gets where it needs to go in a defensible manner. So once right. those, and just the, uh, yeah, just to clarify, the actual SaaS application, Cross Copy Enterprise is running within our space uh, within Amazon, right? So the actual application you're not needing to load within or spit up in your space. It's essentially just configuring the AWS or the Azure sources and upload targets that we can line up uh, basically wherever you want that to go. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about it as well is that we can spin up an instance um, across the pond, you know, over, over in uh, Europe or up in Canada, wherever you want it. Uh, so we can keep the data within the uh, GDPR uh, compliant. So I'm gonna go back to my projects. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and type in my project name, which will be, uh, let's see. A little descriptor. Oops. Not getting too creative today. And then down here, we can pick what sources we want our, our clients or our custodians to see or pick from, basically choose their sources. So we got local files, we got Dropbox, we got Google Drive, Box, Microsoft, or OneDrive. Um, I'm just going to leave them all checked at this time just so you can kind of see it. If we wanted to, we could have them go into different Amazon buckets. But I'm just going to go ahead and create that project. Here it is. So now I've got I've got it, my project set up, and now I'm ready to move on to the next the next phase. So far, there's nothing that's been done, so there's no no jobs ran, no files uploaded, no custodians. So let's go ahead and uh, add some custodians. I can either start typing those in individually, or I can come down here and import from a CSV. Here's my custodian list. And then uh, I'm just going to say finish. 
It's asking me if I want to do a request right now, but for demo purposes, we just typed in some names. So I don't want to do that right now. So I'm going to hit no. My custodians are now available to be seen. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to come back in here. And let's see, let's go to my custodians. And now I want to find the shady character named John Rome. Oops. So now I want to go to actions. Whoops, I want to actually go back one, Shane. We just changed that screen. Sorry, we guys were so redesigning. So go to actions, action, no, go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're still in development mode here. Um, so <laughs> actions, there you go. Great new request. Yeah, great, great, great new request. Here it is. So now I can type in. Please add documents for the road case. This verbiage right here under request message, um, it's, it's, it's just um, verbiage that you can change. Uh, it's just a template right now it's that just, we have in that. Yeah, so feel free to change that as you want. Um, we put a date in there. So when we want the data collected by, and I'm only going to send this to John. So there he is. And you can see over here, we've got email and phone. Um, we are able to send this uh, via email or by, by text. So it can, like John said earlier, it can go to uh, um, either your email or it can also go to Android or iOS. And now I'm going to and just to, Yeah, and just to, yeah, go ahead. And just to come clarify, the application, like I said before, both the custodian request and the admin will run on Android iOS, and it can collect from loose files on Android or iOS, like pictures, documents, whatever. If you want a full phone collection, you know, something like Mode One does, where it's getting texts and messages, contacts, and all the other uh, sophisticated things, uh, there's still uh, options and those are things that you would also incorporate, right? So um, just wanted to clarify, it, it can collect some files from the phone. It's just not doing a full, uh, full exhaustive phone uh, collection like like something like Mode 1 does. So, um, so now you can see I've, I received the email, um, request subject to road documents. There's my uh, my email and down here we've got a quick start guide. And we can also just launch the cross copy. So this is what your custodians will see. We're going to generate the OTP. Got to go back to my email to get that. Here it is. I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. And I'll hit log in. So now this is basically what the custodian sees. And once again, nice and clean. Um, project, need legal docs. Um, I've got um, basically nothing there right now, but I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and start collecting some data. If, for those of you that have used our tools in the past, um, you can still use the, the drag and drop, as you can see here. Uh, when I say drag and drop, notice the data hasn't moved. It's just basically um, sliding and creating a file list. So these are from, and then every time we, we add a source, we've got the ability to put in a note. Um, so I'm just going to put these documents are from my local drive. And that way that note can be saved with, with the, the documents that are being uploaded. Um, you don't have to put a note in every time, but uh, it's just something that it's totally up to you. I'm going to come over to OneDrive. And I'm going to pick some documents from my OneDrive. Select, hit upload. I'm going to say stop prompting me for my notes. I just, you guys already know what the note is, so we don't need to do that anymore. And so now from our OneDrive account, the documents are being uploaded. And we'll show you here in just a second of there's a big differentiator between our products and any other products that might be out there. It takes just a little bit of time to pull those up. 
down below here, you can see something else that we're doing. So each one of these are considered a job, right? So we've got, um, I picked up uh, 38 files from my local drive uh, down below. And now I'm, I'm picking up 43 files from my OneDrive. I'm going to go ahead and do one more. Let's go ahead and do a C drive. Hey, Shane, we got another question. If, sure. If I can interrupt. Yep. Uh, no, I had somebody ask if they were, if this is supporting both an uh, individual Google Drive or OneDrive or if it also does like business stuff, you know, the, big, the business versions of the drives, corporate versions, basically. Yeah, it does both. So, yeah, it, it does allow you to, there's only one icon to represent essentially any of those accounts. So whether it's Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, or OneDrive, you can um, essentially, when you log in, you authenticate based on whether you're using your corporate drive or your individual drive. Oh, yep, sorry, so just, yep, no, no problem. Any other questions, John? We good? No, we're good right now. Okay, so I just uploaded uh, four um, from my G drive. So I've got local drive, one drive, and Google Drive. Um, now I'm going to just click done. And that can say done for now. So if I'm riding right in the train in and I'm on my phone doing this collection and I need to get off, I can say done for now and continue, or I can say I'm completely done. I'm, I'm going to be completely done and, and check out. So it says thank you for uploading the, the files. Now I'm going to have to get back into my uh, admin screen. So I've got to get my, the other thing you get too, that's nice is you get this custodian email that basically says, um, these files were uploaded, so it gives you a quick quick snapshot of what just happened. Here's my OTP top back into my administrative screen. Hit log in. And one of the great things about because this role, this has a mobile interface as well, so you don't have to download it, is if you're just out and about and you want to check the status of custodians and whether there's a being completed or not, of course you get the email. But if there's any issues, you can see that easily as well. Um, now, if I if we wanted to, let's say let's say you guys already have the credentials for for your clients. Up here we have Open CCE client, so we could actually uh, go ahead and do the collection. If we, as long as we had the credentials. So if they gave us the credentials, we could easily use, you know, go into Dropbox, G Drive, Box, OneDrive, and uh, do the collection from here. It's, it's the same same method as what we just what, what we just went through as from the custodial side, um, but we can also do it from the admin side as well. From here, um, now we can see well, we can see now that we've got 21 custodians. We've we've uploaded 85 files, three jobs. Once again, that each job is considered a, a source right so we've got local local uh, files OneDrive, and g drive down here we can see uh, if we wanted to we can go ahead and see our uh, chain of custody we also have the the verification log uh, the verification log um, is, is nice because that's basically what people are used to and these are our tools um, but i'm going to show you something real quick that is very important you can see We've got the OneDrive, I'm going to show you the hash type. So with this, let's go ahead and close this. Actually, I'll go ahead and put hash value as well. Yeah, just to update Shane, we have a total of five minutes remaining, so. Oh, geez, yeah, okay. So real quick, uh, quick XOR, uh, if you guys haven't heard of it, it's, uh, it's a unique hash value to OneDrive. Um, and that's, John wrote an article about that, so. Here you can see we've got the quick XOR for, for OneDrive. Down here we've got the MD5 hash value for uh, my local files. And then we've got the uh, uh, MD5 hash for, for our, our G drive as well. So um, going back to my project, if I wanted to now, I could just go ahead and say, let's go check this. Chain of custody. Um, here's the chain of custody. And then I can just go ahead and generate a PDF of that if I wanted to and open that PDF up, and there's my chain of custody. So with that being said, um, that's pretty yeah, much can, how it works. 
can't stress enough the importance of what you just saw. It might seem kind of geeky, but to our knowledge, there's another app that basically lets you just open a log, like if you're doing a local copy and see the hash types, the hash verification, throw it up in a PDF and just print it and save it or save the, the CSV. So uh, we wanted to, uh, you know, stress that we're not aware of anything that lets you kind of basically do that very straightforward. Yeah, here's some some billing information. Like I said, we're still in, this is still in development. We're we are hoping to have it out within the next few weeks. Um, but here's some just some quick billing information: to, total files, um, total size, and total custodians collected from. Um, so that's available to you. But with that being said, that's Cross Copy Enterprise. Um, I'm going to pass it over to uh, to Ryan and uh, get him the uh, have him show you. Oops, wrong Cross Copy wrong. Portable. Yep, cross copy portable. I went to, he's going to show up from the Mac side of things. That's why I hit the wrong one. Go ahead, Ryan. Thanks, Shane. Um, so this is going to be our uh, hard, or excuse me, our cross copy portable product. Um, it has a similar layout to cross copy enterprise in that this box here is where you would drag and drop any files uh, that you'd like to collect. So for example, I'll go ahead and drag and drop a file in. And again, it stays where it is. Uh, it's just a um, a way of adding it here. Uh, I'll go ahead and check out the settings real quick. So we have some uh, filter settings, including date ranges, the file extensions, uh, as well as file search uh, or path search patterns. So I'll just go ahead and include a one. This one of my folders is named one. So uh, let's go back to the home screen. And as you can see, the uh, target and logs paths have been pre-generated. I am running this off of an external drive. So uh, cross copy automatically generates these paths for you. So it, it adds to the simplicity of the software. And so all of my data will be going back to that drive. So if I go ahead and click run, we could see we have access to our copy path and logs path during the collection. We could see it enumerating and now copying. And now the job is complete. If we take a look over here, we can see our copied files and our logs. All the way down through the file structure. It's copied exactly as it was. And just to clarify, uh, and thanks, Ryan, this is great. And we'll continue on is we switch gears really quick because we're running out of time because some technical difficulties sorry about that so if some of you can hang around for an extra five minutes so we can kind of wrap this up that would be great but the clarify this is a local on-prem application we released this about a year ago it's been very popular got a lot of traction again just to build self collection kits to be able to download it and just run it be able to run it on max windows or linux with the same exact interface so just to clarify Cross copy interface or cross copy enterprise is fully web SaaS application, whereas this is something you can download. And in some cases, it can be more robust just because you have that ability to copy to an external drive. When you have too many files, you can't practically upload over the cloud. Thanks, so Shane. Did you want me to pass the time back to you? Yeah, just keep going. Uh, you can keep going and doing the demo. I just wanted to uh, kind of clarify since you switch gears so so fast. Show yeah, show some of the things, with the settings and stuff. So, so similar to uh, our other products, we have a a set of logs here. Uh, for example, we have that verification log, um, as well as um, uh, this job file .scj. So, should your job, um, you know, have some error or not complete partway through, you can always use this uh, file from the logs in order to rerun a job for any errors. Uh, going back to those settings, um, a couple of other things that we have. Uh, we have extra uh, logging that you can add on, like the hash list and a file list and a folder list. Um, these will create reports that will give you uh, all of the files, folders, and hashes of all the files um, in text files. Yep. So with cross copy, remember you do get both. You you get the ability to run it from uh, Windows and uh, Macs. Um, so so when you purchase it, it does have the ability to run on both both platforms. Uh, it's portable. Um, you can activate and deactivate it without any dongles. And uh, like it's as you can see there, it's it's really quick as well. So I meant 
uh, that, that engine there will probably be one of our new engines that we put into the rest of our products, um, or rest of our on-prem products, that is, so. Right, and someone is asking about permissions uh, when you're, you're dealing with maxing, what kind of things we run into, and we've done a lot of work, actually, in cross-copy portable that can get around uh, many of the permission issues that, not, not that we can override Apple's ultimate, but uh, we've been able to tweak it. If you want to talk to that a little bit, Ryan, um, with your experience of how easy, you know how easy this is to set up and run on a Mac. Yeah, um, due to the way that we've developed the app, uh, it's ready to go right out of the box. Um, all you'd have to do is uh, just add it to your computer. Um, and um, as far as permissions for files goes, uh, we haven't run into any issues with permissions uh, other than um, as you know, Mac will lock down their system files, of course, so we can't collect those. Uh, but any user-generated files or anything like that are free game. We do have a question about cost, and I'm assuming it's um, for CrossCopy Enterprise. We haven't quite put a price point on that yet. More than likely, what it will be is it'll probably be um, by custodian. Um, like I said, it's going to be a SaaS program or a SaaS-based program. So. Um, but we're still kind of ironing those out. Um, the other thing we're doing is um, we're also working with with some other uh, vendors out there that are able to do phone collections, and so uh, we're we're going to be at hopefully adding that in there as well. So everything's all underneath one hood. So hopefully that'll be coming out in our next release. Any other? Yeah, we got another. Let's see here. Will cross copy portable replace safe copy? If no, what are the differences between the two? So uh, cross copy, I'll take that one. Cross cross copy, we hope that will basically, you know, everybody who has safe copy would go to it. It's more expensive for obvious reasons, <laughs> but uh, it it is our intention is to evolve things along the cross copy line versus the safe copy line. So, and we do have several customers who have upgraded all of their safe copy licenses to cross copy, just because like Shane said, it's three to four times faster, it's cross platform. We have very attractive pricing for enterprise licensing. So people can put it on as many drives as they want. So yeah, it's really been the evolution of safe copy for us. And the main differences I think I've mentioned, um, are that between safe copy and cross copy you know safe copy started about 16 so we've been building these types of tools we're the best at it we've been doing it for 17 years building on-prem collection tools so it's been around almost as long as the company has and we have evolved it over time but with the technology changes and our ability to go cross-platform also to build an engine that's you know four times faster and cross and safe copy is really fast it's a multi-threaded engine it's called viper that we custom built and it's it was faster than pretty much anything else out there then when we started building cross copy we realized with some of the newer technology we could make it even three to four times faster than safe copy and so yeah this is those are some huge differentiators plus mac just having the same license that you can use on a mac or windows system is huge And going back to cross copy or uh, cross copy enterprise, uh, the web based version, um, I, John hates talking about himself, but he doesn't do it enough. He's uh, very talented at what he does. Uh, he actually, him and Jamie, our CTO, uh, actually developed the first web based uh, program out there, which was like, I don't know, John, what was, how long ago did you guys develop that? Yeah, so we built something similar to the cross copy enterprise that we're showing you today about 16 years ago. <laughs> we first saw that one day people would want to just be able to look at a portal on the web, get status updates on all their collections, send out an agent, let somebody download it. And it just, we figured, hey, that's the obvious choice, especially with remote collections in a lot of different areas. And so we built this engine and it, it was really cool. And we showed it to, I don't know, 15, 20 different firms and government agencies. And they loved the interface and the, what it was gonna provide them, but they didn't see any of their clients collecting to the cloud at that time. <laughs> so we're like, never but in, never the back of my head, in the back of my head, I'm like, you will be. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we actually shelved it 
and we made things like safe coffee and harvester things that were on prem and would run local because well you know we wanted to make money we're a new software company we got to give people what they're you know what they want so but we're, we're happy to be back in the game we know there's been some other products that come out that may look similar but i do genuinely believe after doing this as long as we have that that we've got some things going on under the hood here that is unmatched as far as your defensibility and being forensic guys who started the company and always have our forensic hat on. We just want you to really take a serious look at it or any other way you're doing your cloud collections and go, can I produce the chain of custody I just saw them produce on that webinar? You know, go to your vendor, go to whoever does your collections and go, show me a chain of custody like this. Most likely they won't be able to, especially if you were just collecting from four of those different sources, because they all handle hashing differently and you really have to do a lot of work under the hood to account for that. So again, we're just trying to always make sure people are, you know, are being defensible when they use our products. So I don't know if you have any other, we've got a few more questions and we're gonna answer because we don't wanna extend this too much longer. We'll answer your questions directly. I think we have three or four here. We wanna keep to our, our promise, which we've already broke by seven minutes, but uh, do want to thank everybody for showing up today and thank you for enduring any spam you've got related to this. We just thought it was really important to promote this even more so than anything we've recently shown because we do believe it's a significant advancement for our industry and we're just really excited. We put a lot of work into it. Absolutely appreciate everybody helping us spread the word on LinkedIn and social media to get here. Sorry for the few the few glitches that we had where John doesn't know how to switch apparently his monitors and get it to the right one. And uh, yeah, I can't thank you enough. And thank you to Shane and Ryan on our side to help facilitate this. I'm sure we'll be in touch and you'll feel free out. Most of you know how to get a hold of us and we look forward to seeing you know some of you or many of you at legal week next week i know everybody's been burning the midnight oil getting their meetings settled so we appreciate you carving out a little bit of time for us today to uh, take a look at some of the new toys we're working on yeah and just to add on to uh, cross copy enterprise i mean it, it's so easy to get set up and uh, and to run it um and it's still easy on the custodians um and so hopefully we'll have a, a beta version out um before too long and if you'd like to be a part of that beta, just shoot us an email and we can get you on the list. All Any right, I think we're good. Only we good. got a few, I'm, re I'm responding to them directly, but we're okay. gonna go ahead and stop the broadcast now, cut off. I did get a note from, unfortunately get a note to, from LinkedIn and after trying to get the live stream to work, it said it started, failed, started, failed. So. Apologize if anybody was on LinkedIn, maybe trying to get the stream because um, it wasn't happy. So it's been a little bit of a techie day. Sorry about that. But no, I will wrap it up here. Again, thanks everybody. Appreciate thanks, you everybody. joining. And we will yeah, have a good rest of your day, weekend, and safe travels out there. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.